Hi, and welcome to another episode of Marriage on a Tightrope. I'm Katie. I'm Alan. And we're still married. Today is a very important topic. And before we get into the important topic, we want to have a a disclaimer is a strong, scary word, but let's call it a disclaimer. Sure. We want to explain a little bit why uh, we want to talk about this, why it's important to us. And recognize that this can be a, a scary, intimidating topic, one that's that's not that's hard to understand if you're if you're not close to people that this affects. And that topic is membership councils, or previously known as disciplinary councils. I mean, I can remember being an active member all the way back in 2017. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I'm still active, but an active believing member uh, a few years ago, and If somebody was called to a disciplinary council, the immediate thought is what, Katie? That they did something wrong. What did they do? Yes. If they're married, it was probably something to do with an affair. It was a scary thing. And it was was someone that's like, maybe you try to distance yourself from them. And if that's not your reaction, awesome. That was my reaction, (laughs) I'm ashamed to say. But now in this space, if you're meeting up with couples and you're meeting new people, people that not only are in mixed faith marriages themselves, but you start to meet with professionals that are helping people on the margins and you get to really be close and love these people. And Katie, who is the number one person that we have worked with closer than anyone else in this space? It is Natasha Helfer. And I want to, I want to just say to Alan, for those of you who are not members of the church, who don't know what a membership council is, or disciplinary council is, Alan, can you describe what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So a few churches have have this this process in place, similar to the LDS church. But the LDS church has these, these councils, local leadership. At the very smallest unit, there's a bishop and uh, two bishopric counselors. Above that bishop, there is a stake presidency who has two counselors. And then there is the high council, which is 12 men who are um, acting as kind of, yeah, it's a high council. It's a, it's a, a support network for the stake president, uh, disciplinary councils are not all they do. That's actually quite a small portion of what they do, but they have different assignments to look over different programs within the church, the the young men's program or the young women's program, or, uh, you know, the high counselors go around and they speak to the different wards on high council Sunday, um, at church, um, after the bread and water is taken for the sacraments. You can think of this similar to a courtroom where you have, you know, you could say a jury of people who are called and summoned to come and listen to this council, similar to that. Yeah. So there's a handbook that outlines uh, sometimes where a disciplinary council at this point is called a membership council, where that is required to occur. If if a certain thing happens, a, uh, a disciplinary council is required. Outside of that, and we don't need to talk about you know what those things are. But at the discretion of the stake president or bishop, a council can be called on a member's behalf um, at their discretion, just based on what they want to do. Uh, And that's, that's the case with Natasha. Now, the outcomes of these councils, there's a few different outcomes. A, nothing happens. They basically say, hey, here's the evidence against the, the um, accusations that we're, we're making. And what is your defense? The person defends themselves. Uh, typically, half of the council is supposed to advocate for the person, the defendant, I guess you could say, and the other half is trying to prosecute. So they split that evenly. How even it is, well, I don't need to flash my post Mormon side. I don't like these councils, and many people don't, even those that are in the church. But that's not the point of this conversation. The point of the conversation is to support a friend in need. So uh, no action is certainly an an option. Uh, Another option is disfellowship, um, which basically means, hey, uh, you can't hold a calling for a period of time. Uh, You can't uh, take the sacrament for a period of time. You won't be asked to pray for a period of time, but you're still a member of the church. And usually that's communicated, whether it's a month or six months, or let's talk after a few months to see if you're going to be returned to a member in, in good standing. And then the last... The last option is um, excommunication, 
or now they call it removal of membership records, where you're actually removed from the records of the church. You're no longer a member of the church. You cannot hold a calling. You cannot speak at church. They can't stop you from going to church unless they (laughs) want to do a restraining order, which is very rare, but does happen. Um, And that that is not an optimal outcome for most people. I guess some people may want their membership records removed, uh, but... In this case, Natasha does not. It's important to understand that these meetings are closed door, so there is no recording of any type. On the church's side, they will not report what is said in these meetings. It is completely on the person who is being tried or who is having the membership council against them to talk about what was said. And... I feel like this can go two different ways in a lot of cases. And so over the years, Alan and I have known maybe a couple people here and there who had a membership council. Mm -hmm. And I had a really good friend whose husband had one because he had an affair for two years. And then when she found out, then it all came out and he went and confessed. He was excommunicated and then rebaptized into the church later on. So there's a process of what they call repentance um, if you do want to return to fel- full fellowship. The reason why we are talking about Natasha today is because one, she means a lot to our community. Some of you may have not have listened to episodes we've done with her. She is a Mormon health therapist. She is a sex therapist. She is a mixed faith marriage therapist. She has 25 years plus experience in this space. She is someone who is very professional. She has used good evidence-based science in her profession in order to give the best advice and best counsel to the people that she talks to. Uh, who come in for therapy, and she does the same with our group, with our workshop group. And this is something that is hard to understand. I think that Natasha is an important piece for us. I think it is she is one of the most important pieces we've used over yeah. the last year and a half. When we first interviewed Natasha, she really stood out as someone who is unbiased, that sitting down with a mixed faith couple or multiple mixed faith couples, she has this rare talent of not making either side feel like she favors the other. She's not there to tell anyone to leave the church and she's not there to tell anyone to go back to church. Uh, It's very, very hard to meet that balance and she does it just brilliantly. And the reason why we feel like it's so important to to take the time and airwaves here uh, to talk about this and support her is it's more than just our experience that is saying this because of that first episode with Natasha, we felt very comfortable asking her to partner with us in a workshop, a six week online workshop, which if you've listened to the, the podcast, you've heard us mention that many times as couples sign up to, to do that with us Uh, in response to this news that her stake president um, in Kansas is is holding a membership council to determine if Natasha will remain a member of the church or not. Uh, We sent an email to every couple that has um, taken taken this course with us. It's over a hundred couples at this point. And right now we've received emails back with, with letters to include with, and we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but we've letters of support to give to the stake president where believing members are saying, don't do this. Um, Natasha has never once recommended that I leave the church. She has only strengthened our relationship with the church, with each other. Um, Many members that are still believing said, um, Natasha has made it possible for my spouse to support me in my desire to remain active. Like that, that is the outcome of what's happening with the, with the work with Natasha. The other thing that I was struck by from believing members saying that when they listened to her give her presentation and talk about these super sensitive issues that 
Uh, they felt the spirit, whatever that meant for them. They felt like this was really good, helpful information. And we have to wholeheartedly agree that that is what we have found as well. And Natasha has been a huge voice in this space for healing, for marriages to work through communication issues, to work through sexual issues. Yeah. She has done a really good job of that. And so Ellen and I have, have known about this coming up for a little while now. And, you know, we said we will keep this extremely confidential. We won't say anything unless you do. And she decided to tell everyone on Facebook Live. She had a very raw and emotional and vulnerable um, video of her on the mountain describing her feelings about what this has meant to her and the pain that it has caused her. And then she she did a second follow-up to describe ways that everyone can be helpful for her that for her in this journey. And then last night she recorded a video, um, a long interview, a three hour interview with John Dolan on Mormon Stories, uh, addressing the accusations and allegations against her. And, you know, I one of the reasons why she has done so is uh she has been notified that she will have one hour to defend herself when it comes to the council, which is just sickening to me, really. I'm going to say it's just it's just makes me sick that that's that's what they're going to be doing. Um, you know, she posted a video of how people can help. And one of the things she said is that she needs character witnesses who are LDS and in good standing, which to me meant Temple Recommend holding members to come and talk. Those are the only character witnesses that they would allow to come speak for on her behalf. Oh, so I can't go? You can't go. Damn. But Alan, I listened to that, and Alan and I were on our way to a baseball game right after we had listened. And I told Alan, I feel like... It's really hard. Um, out of everyone... Out of anyone that could go speak for her, it should be me. And the reason is because, you know, I'm still active. I'm, I just got called as the Young Ones Camp Director. Um, Only the most righteous people get called as Camp Director. (laughs) Only the most fun people. Amen, sister. (laughs) Um, Anyway, I, I have worked with her day in and day out on these workshops we've done, like, 80 classes together. So, you know, twice a week for six weeks at a time, Alan and I spend time with her. We go over the presentation. We see her interact with the couples. We listen to her answer questions and provide safe spaces for these couples. She stays on after the the 90 minutes with these couples. And a few times she would say, did I go too far? in this way, in that way. She's always looking for ways to improve. She would hate this episode because to her credit, she's she's trying to not make this about her. There's obviously a high personal cost for her. But the reason, one of the biggest reasons why we love her so much is she speaks up for the marginalized. She speaks up for proper clinical expertise and practice. And that means so much. So she is trying to use this moment of very personal anguish as a loudspeaker for, for good sexual health, for um, proper ecclesiastical boundaries, <laughs> all of the above. And again, I, I'm listening to myself and Katie talk through the lens of those that are new to mixed faith marriage. And I understand how difficult like this topic and how foreign it might feel surround yourself with the people that you need to support and that need to support you. And you'll, you'll see where we're coming from. You hang out with other mixed faith couples and you learn that the people that have left the church are not evil. They're not looking to sin. They're good people. And the people that are still in the church with the other couples that you meet are not brainwashed. They're not stupid. They're not blind. 
your biases break down so quickly. And we have seen how amazing Natasha is on a personal level. Just a few weeks ago, she came to Katie's birthday party with her amazing partner who was just great. Um, meeting him was fantastic. And just the whole, this is just really sad and hard for us. Yeah, it is. And, you know, going back to my sort of decision to go, um, I just... Oh, I, can you explain that? Because we actually haven't walked through like... Yeah, so I I just felt like, you know, I'm since I see her at a professional level, since I work with her, since I'm an active believing member, it would make the most sense for me to go. So I called Natasha and I said, who do you have in your corner? Who's going to be speaking on your behalf? And at the time, she said it, she had just asked her ex-husband. And I told her, I said, I, I need to be there because I feel like I'm the perfect candidate to speak for you. We have a history together, both professionally and personally. And I, um, I just feel like it's this space needs people like you. And however I can lend my voice, I will. And it was met with, you know, a very, I think, um, tearful and, um, very happy response. So I drafted an email to her stake president. I sent it over. Um, I know that they've had a conversation about me and a couple others who will be coming. I have not yet gotten the clearance from the stake president. I'm waiting on that. And as soon as I do, I will book my ticket and, be there on Sunday for Natasha. But I feel like it's, it's just, it's more than that. It's like, I feel like it's, I'm representing our whole community when I, when I decided that I needed to go. I also feel like it's the right thing to do. And it's really hard for me because, um, I feel like I'm a little bit having to straddle the line, um, in support of someone that I believe in and, also a church that I still participate in. It's very, it's really hard. And, you know, in some ways too, it's been, I've been stressed about, you know, any type of backfire that would come to me for doing this. Um, But again, it's the right thing to do. And so we've made the decision. Can I quote a hymn? Sure. (laughs) Do what is right let the consequence follow, right? This is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, I never even would think that I would be in this position (laughs) before, but I think that that speaks to the impact Natasha has had on our community. And so for those of you who don't know her, uh, go and listen to the episodes we've done with her. Uh, join the workshop in the future and see what she's all about. Yeah. What else, what else can people do in the short term right now? We're sitting on Wednesday, April 14th. We're going to release this right after we record it. Yeah. The council is on Sunday. So just a few days away in the short amount of time, if you're listening before that date, the 19th, what can people do? So in her Facebook live, in the comment she has put uh, in the post, she put where you can direct emails. So if you would like to, send an email of support. Maybe you don't know her uh, personally and you maybe you don't know her professionally, but if you believe in um, good best practices for mental health providers and you have been affected by a good mental health provider that has pro- has helped you along the way, um, you can send an email to the stake president. The email address is Steve M. Daly, S-T-E-V-E-M- D-A-L-E-Y at gmail.com if you would like to send support that way. Be kind, be loving, be supportive. Yeah. Um, he has invited people to email him, so this isn't a doxing, <laughs> for those that know what that is. Very different than docking. Uh, but if, if, you have, uh, <laughs> if you have any words of support for Natasha or the work that she does, that's the words that she wants. The importance of the messages that she shares. Uh, you can send those to the, to him. Other ways that they can support. I mean, if you're local, if you happen to be in Kansas. Yeah, if you are going to be in Wichita, Kansas, there's a good chance that I will be there as well on Sunday. Um, again, 
pending pending notification. Yeah. So if you would like to be there, you can go to Natasha's Facebook and see what time the count the council will start. And I'm sure that they can uh, socially distance outside of the church building for that. Yeah, you can post uh, your own thoughts on the topic and words of support for Natasha on your own social media um, outlets, Facebook. Um, I'm going to make a TikTok today. I haven't discussed it on TikTok yet. Oh my gosh, I made a really funny TikTok this morning. He did, you guys. It, it's really funny. It's funny. It's a BYU post-divorce thing. Anyway, it's not making fun of the church. Go watch it. It's hilarious. But um, I'm going to make a TikTok about this to support Natasha as well. So whatever you can do to amplify um, the importance of this issue, where you're comfortable, go for it. Again, if you're not comfortable or you're not in a position to be public about something like this, that is so valid. And we get how difficult that is. I don't think I could have done it like a year ago. Right. I I really don't. So believe me when I say like, I am scared out of my mind to do this, but um, it's okay to not do anything. If you want to just send a private, a private chat, just in your support, that's great too. And hello, prayers, or good vibes, or whatever you whatever you believe in. For sure. Um, that would be super helpful. I want to say, before we move on, um, how proud I am of Katie for just doing what... I'm going to talk to you directly. <laughs> for just doing what you feel is the right thing, especially because it's scary. Um, it's important for if, if any of our family... Uh, that still heavily believes in the church or any of our leaders that are uh, happen to be listening or anyone up at the top of the church, anybody on the belief spectrum, it's really important that you hear me say that I support Katie in whatever you want to do. And there is zero part of me that is pulling or pushing her to be involved with this Natasha situation. There's no part of me trying to use this, this, as an opportunity to, to prove a point about how the church operates or doesn't operate her journey, your journey truly is yours. And I just want to love and support you through it. And he continues to do so. Thank you for saying that. Um, okay. And other news before we end, (laughs) (laughs) um, for those of you who didn't see, we had a New York times article come out last week and, Super exciting for us. We were interviewed by a reporter a couple months ago, and we were featured as one of five uh, different marriage podcasts in the New York Times. And it was, you know, you do an hour and a half interview for just like a couple paragraphs. paragraphs. (laughs) But I thought it was great. And I thought it was cool that it brought awareness to the issues that we've been, you know, working so hard at for the past three years. And we had a really great response. So thanks to everyone that, um, I don't know, gave us a pat on the back and that was fun and cheered us on. That I was think cool. Now we should start our podcast with welcome to marriage and title. I'm Alan, I'm Katie, and we're published in the New York times <laughs> this episode. <laughs> if you want to cool. read the episode, the, the article, you can go into our Instagram. We post about it there and our Facebook. Right. Group. The we link is in our it. bio in the Instagram. And then cool. yeah, there it's in the Facebook group. And if you aren't on either of those platforms, you could just look it up in the New York times. I'm sure you could That's right. Google our names. Yep. And then last we want to, Alan wants to tease our next episode. Yes, we will be back to our regularly scheduled program uh, on our next episode, which will come out next week. Uh, tomorrow, we're sitting down with John Ogden. That name may ring a bell. He wrote the book, When Mormons Doubt. He's a believing member of the church. Uh, he reached out to us a little while ago with a really cool concept. Katie and I have been scratching our heads on how can we support mixed faith families with how to teach your children. We know that that the best way to do it is to teach common values Um, to make it more open-minded and teach a a variety of different perspectives. But how do you really do that? Well, John was listening to our supplication, to our prayer, and reached out and said, hey, um, I've started this this website uh, with a few buddies of mine, and that's exactly what it is. It's all of these lists of common values, and it walks you through an exact way to teach each value each week. So this is a family home evening. This could be for those mixed faith couples that aren't comfortable teaching from Come Follow Me. Like this can be 
um, in the place of that, in addition to that. Uh, and so we're super excited to talk to John tomorrow. Um, just, we did one of the lessons. We did one of the lessons on family free. history. Mm-hmm. And again, you wouldn't know that it was written by someone that was LDS. Uh, really cool stuff. It had quotes from like African tribes and this like ancient Indian wisdom and the importance of remembering your ancestors. It had a link to watch a little video of Moana, right? Because that's a key theme in that. Uh, and it generated good conversation with our teenagers, which mm-hmm. I didn't expect. Yeah, it was very cool. So we're looking forward to that, and we hope you enjoyed that episode. Katie, anything else? I think that's it. All right. Thanks for listening to Marriage in a Tightrope. You can email us at marriageinatightrope at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook or join that group if you're looking for more conversation with other mixed faith couples. Don't forget to put your pin on the mixed faith map, which is a an announcement in the Facebook group. And you can follow us on TikTok, which we don't really make videos, or Instagram, which we post a little more regularly there. That's right. Thanks so much.